of her faith, how I react or how I act. And my wife knows me and my family. And even you, people know you that when you are under pressure, how you react. And you will, you will agree with me that it's not an easy thing to the need for wisdom in times of crisis. City is a thing yes we need wisdom so from this scripture the apostle James is actually saying this he's saying we will fall into diverse temptation and he says when we go into diverse temptation we should count it for joy. Meaning, we should take it as a way of opportunity. And us to be transformed to become like his son, Jesus Christ. Moving away from the world, the world system, how, how we used to think. That is why he says in the book of Romans chapter 12, the apostle Paul is saying, he's appealing to the saints. He says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, with the message of the Lord that you present your bodies as living sacrifices holy and acceptable to the Lord which is your reasonable service meaning it will make sense if you live holy if you live your life sacrificially to the Lord then it will show that you are really believing in God and he said don't be transformed according to the world but by renewing your mind which is the perfect will of God meaning once you renew your mind and you renew your mind by the word of God are we together so far beloved then our lives will change and because we are in a crisis and we talk when we talk about crisis we say we said crisis it is an unstable or crucial time or a state of affairs in which a decision or in in a decisive change where it is pending and we said we said we said because we are in the covid 19 this pandemic that has caused pressure to each and every one of us to think soberly because things are no longer the same we are in financial crisis as a country unemployment and many other things that are affecting each and every one of us so the Lord is showing us a solution that when we go through those trials, those challenges, we should enjoy to build our character. We should be patient so that we can be matured. But if it's difficult, 
And we cannot hold ourselves there. He's putting it this way. If anyone lack wisdom, he is giving us a way of how we can get this wisdom. He said we should ask it from above. Meaning we should ask it from generous God. We should know, beloved, that our God is generous. And the Bible says he will not rebuke us when we ask him. And then he also encourages us. He says when we ask, we should ask in faith. Because an unstable person a person who is wavering, he says it's like a wave of the sea who is tossed to and fro. He says that person is unstable in all his ways. He put it this way. He says an unstable person is disloyal. A person when he asks from God, he must ask from God with loyalty. And the Bible says, and he must ask God alone. Other translation says, a double-minded man. He's unstable in all his ways. Must not expect anything from God. So God also show us how to get this wisdom. Because he really wants us to have this wisdom. Some hundred, I mean some 14 verse 1 says, Fools in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt and do evil, evil things. No one of them does anything. Good. The Bible here says, unwise people, people who don't have wisdom, they say in their heart, no God. And because there is no God in their hearts, they do corrupt things. You can imagine why in the country there, there is a lot of corruption. It means there are a lot of people who have decided in their hearts that there is no God. Because they want to do evil. Meaning when you have said in your heart, no God, then there is nothing good that you will do. Proverbs 5 verses, verses, I mean Proverbs 4 verses 5 to 9. It says, it says, get wisdom. Get understanding. Don't forget and don't turn away from my words. Don't abandon her. And she will guard you. Talking about wisdom. Love her. And she will protect you. The beginning of wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Before anything. Before anything else. Highly esteem her. And she will exalt you. She will be honored. She will honor you. If you embrace her. She will place a graceful wealth 
breath on your head. She will give you a glorious crown. Talking about wisdom. Beloved, the Bible here personified wisdom. That wisdom is like a person. That Embrace wisdom. He will, she will protect you. Embrace wisdom. And when you embrace this wisdom, she will place you, a, a, she will place a graceful wrath in your head. She will exalt you. Yes. We have to seek wisdom. He said in the in in everything. In the beginning, we must seek wisdom. Proverbs 4, verses 7, it says, Wisdom is a principal thing. Meaning, wisdom is a foundation. Proverbs 9, verses 10. To 12, it says, the beginning of wisdom, it tells us how to get wisdom. It says, it's the fear of the Lord. And it says, the knowledge of the Holy One, it's understanding. With other translation, it says, fear of the Lord, it's foundation of wisdom. Remember, we are addressing the book of James chapter 1 verse 5. If anyone lacks wisdom, let, let him ask from the generous God. And the book of wisdom, the book of Proverbs, Solomon says, the foundation of wisdom is the fear of God. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. So it says, the knowledge of the Holy One re results in good judgment. It says, through me, your, your days will be many. That is wisdom. Wisdom, it says, through him. When you have wisdom, your days will be many. Years will be added to your life. You want to have long life? The secret is, the secret is, have wisdom. If you are wise, it is to your benefit. If you are crying, if you are cynical, you will be you will bear it all alone. The Bible says, fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. Now, pay attention to this one. It's a story of Solomon. God came to him. In 1 Kings chapter 3 verses 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God, God said, ask, ask what should I give you? 
Imagine if God can come to you and give you a blank check and says, ask anything. Ask anything. This is what happened to Solomon. You know he asked for wisdom. But I want us to pay attention to the definition of the wisdom that which he requested from the Lord. In verse 9, the Bible says, he answered, your servant and obedient heart is actually saying, your servant an obedient heart. Meaning, meaning God, your servant, give me an obedient heart. He says, your people and your people and to discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? Beloved, please understand this. Solomon, when he asked wisdom, the Bible break it down here to show us what is wisdom. What we are seeing here, Solomon said, give me an understanding or an obedience an obedient heart. So, wisdom has to do with obedient heart. And then he says, he says discernment. Discernment, it's a knowledge of separating between right and wrong. Between bad and, 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 and evil. Or bad and good. So he's saying, so that I can judge your people rightly. So that I can instruct them to the right path. Are we together so far? So when the Bible says, if anyone seek, if anyone lacks wisdom, you must ask from God. Meaning during difficulties, during this time of COVID, of this crisis, of, 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 of this, uh, you know, pandemic, we should be able to have a discernment to know, to know about good and bad. To separate between good and bad. Because at this time, many people, Christians, they have fallen away. Why? Because they can't separate. Didn't you hear people where they will say it's too bad. I mean, God will understand and people will understand that it's too bad. Meaning when it's tough, when, when people go through challenges, it doesn't matter which direction you go. Oh, people must understand that when you go through tough times, any decision is alright. Let's put it this way. Let's say a, 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 a person who has grown, you know, you are going to your 30s. 
and you don't you are you are single and the pressures of life come upon you trials and tribulations are coming normally you hear them our god understands that i'm a human being i go through challenges and by so saying they are justifying themselves to do anything whether it's good or bad and most of the time they do wrong things and they say it's time of crisis beloved even in crisis we must be obedient children of God the apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 he's praying for the Ephesians he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory may give you unto, may give unto you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. What does this mean, beloved? It simply says, as Christians, we need wisdom in order to conquer. Wisdom is the obedient heart to judge righteously. Wisdom is a discernment between wrong and right, between good and bad. Wisdom is it's, it's able to solve problems. Wisdom brings solution to every problem. Wisdom comes the situation. Wisdom separates between a lie and the truth. Wisdom commands excellence. Meaning, in chaos, where there is wisdom, you will see things run in order and in excellence. Then you know that wisdom is there. Wisdom save lives when people are about to, destroy, to be destroyed. Wisdom bring peace. That's why the Bible says if anyone lacks, that is why meaning there could be those who have it. Or you can have it this way. And yet, it's not enough. The Bible says, if anyone lacks wisdom, so all the time, we must check our lives whether wisdom it is reigning in our lives. Because it brings peace when you have it. When you go through challenges, peace will reign your heart. You will know that God is in control. The Bible says wisdom protects you. It protects the innocence. It brings victorious life to a Christian life. Wisdom it's powerful. It's a divine insight concerning how we should live and what brings our success. Wisdom it is God's answers and solutions to our problems. Beloved, we should trust in the Lord and know that the Lord is a great God. We also to comfort us, to give us a way 
so that when you are going through challenges of life you may listen to him and then he will be able to show you the way we have a blessed gift in us but we, na- we need to nature this gift so that this gift can work in our lives so that this gift can be powerful in us that is why that is why during crisis you find there are people who are panicking and there are people who are stable because wisdom is strengthened your faith wisdom it matures you it makes you not to be in crisis wisdom is the ability to apply the knowledge you have for your success. Knowledge is the acquired facts about life. Understanding is the interpretation of the knowledge. And then wisdom is the ability to apply that knowledge that which you have. That is why many people they go to school so that they can be informed so that you may know what to do in your lifetime. Even in your career, you are informed so that you can have wisdom in all your situations. But also it's important to know that there are two wisdoms. There are wisdom of the, the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of God. Are we following so far, beloved? And the wisdom of this world. It's of this world. It's of the flesh. And what we're seeing here is that wisdom is basically a skill. And insight that which God gives us to deal with problems. To escape from troubles. So the main thing it's wisdom if we want to really, really overcome many, many situations in our lives. And as a Christian, you must ask for God wisdom. That God may give you wisdom. So what it's saying here, even as we close, it means if you make you make mistakes continually if you continue to do wrong, it's a sign that you lack wisdom. And the Apostle Paul put it this way. All temptations that are coming to us, they are common to men. Meaning, the Bible says God is faithful. He cannot give you a challenge or a temptation that is higher than yours. Meaning, mutata bo na limbo na, muti mu ubu shebi, aba au sheb, aba sheba mata achao, aba bo na kor this one. It's good for you. And then the Bible says, God. When he sees that this is becoming tougher, the Bible says he will make a way. What is the way? The way is wisdom. He will give you insight. You will be able to see from inside why this thing is happening. Let's say you are fighting as a couple. 
And then you are praying for God. God, show me. God will begin to talk to you. The reason you are fighting is because you are no longer close to me. You are no longer reading the Bible. You are no longer close to me. You are no longer praying. Wisdom will come. And then as you start praying, you see the issue of fighting disappear. Each and every one of us, God has a way of a way out in all your problems. So in all your challenges, it can be whatever it is. The Bible says, God has a way out for you. Say, oh God, show me a way out over my life, over my trials, over my problems in the name of Jesus. Are we following, beloved? Now, the last point. From this scripture, we see that wisdom is God intelligence. It's when God takes over your situation. When you ask for wisdom, you are actually saying, God, on my own intelligence and my own thinking and my own strength, I cannot do it. So God, come in. So when you ask for wisdom, you are asking for God to come into your life and do it for you. And God is faithful, he's loving. He will come in. As a single person, you need wisdom to live in God's way as a single person. Because wisdom it's a way that God is doing things. It's a way of God. When you are faced with the challenges of finances, you need wisdom so that you should not start swearing, so that you should not start stealing, so that you should not start lying. You need wisdom so that you can know how to answer, how to deal with that problem of your finances. When you go through challenges, you don't need to hide. You don't need to lie. You need to ask God for wisdom. We are going profiting. We are going again. We are going to go and go and The Bible says, a disloyal person. Why is saying that? It's very easy. It's very easy. It's very easy. And this calling of this message is that let us be loyal. So that when 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 it's tough, you can come before the Lord. Only him and him alone. And call upon him his name. This is not the time to grow to the to go to the graveyard. This is not the time to go to false prophets. This, this is not the time to go to false teachers. But it's the time to be stable and seek the name of the Lord and pray and the God who's generous who said every good and perfect gift come from him you'll be able to bless you and I pray 
that the Lord may bless you. I say I pray that the Lord may bless you and the Lord may strengthen you and bless you with wisdom. Hallelujah. So that we may see wisdom in how you dress. We may see wisdom in your house. How you handle your family. Because wisdom it is displayed. If you want to see God in a person, you will see how they handle themselves. You will see how they dress. You will see how they talk. Then you will say, this is the child of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Your word is powerful. There is none like you. We thank you that you are so generous. That you want to bless us with this awesome, awesome thing of wisdom. You want to bless us with yourself. Because we know that wisdom is our Lord Jesus Christ. Wisdom is the spirit of God. Lord, help us to receive wisdom in our lives. In Jesus' name. Pray with me this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, grant me wisdom so that I may be strong and serve you and glorify the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, give me wisdom so that everything that I do I may manifest the glory of the Lord by your wisdom in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for you are the wonderful God. Bless each and every one with the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of the truth. In Jesus' name, and I pray from today that your church will operate in wisdom. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ooh, yeah, hallelujah. Ooh, yeah, hallelujah.